Today down in the comments, it's the age-old debate, uh, subtitles versus dubbed uh, audio tracks in movies, particular to the movies we're going to talk about here, Euro Horror and Giallo uh, films. These films were often produced without sync sound. Uh, you had a mishmash of different actors speaking maybe different languages on the same set. So I kind of want to hear uh, down in the comments how everyone decides which language they're going to watch these movies in, which language they think is the correct uh, language to watch these movies in. Because anytime I put in one of these movies, I kind of have that debate where I go to the languages setting and I'm like, well, there's the Spanish track, the French track, and the Italian track, and then the English track, and which one of these is right? Uh, so it's a real, real nerdy distinction. Uh, but I think about this stuff and I, I, I wonder what everyone else thinks. Hello, I'm Adam Caesar. This is Project Black T-Shirt, the channel where we take a new or a reissue horror movie and then pair it with a reading recommendation, a book recommendation that you might like if you like those movies. I'm the author of Clown in a Cornfield, or I should say, the Bram Stoker Award nominated, oh no, I'm gonna bend it. The Bram Stoker Award nominated Clown in a Cornfield. Thank you to everyone who's picked up this book, so you to everyone who's read it or reviewed it on Amazon or told their friends about it. Uh, or one of my other like 10 books, if you've read those, if you've listened to the audiobooks, if you've got an ebook, if you've got a paperback, uh, tell your friends, uh, fun at parties. Uh, thanks so much, everyone. Be sure to like this video and subscribe if you want to see more videos like it. Today we are revisiting our friends' uh, Cauldron films. Uh, a few months ago, almost a year ago probably at this point, uh, I reviewed their first two releases, Abracadabra and American Rickshaw. I'll put the link up here to go watch that video if you haven't seen it. Right then I talked about how promising they were and how, uh, how I was very excited to see what they would release next. Their new releases are out. This is The Crimes of the Black Cat and Beyond Terror. Uh, we're going to talk about both of these films. And uh, their new releases are out and they had like a, a replication issue or something. And they delayed them and delayed them and delayed them because of the COVID stuff. Uh, but they're finally, finally here. And they are just as beautiful uh, in presentation as the last two films. I actually think more beautiful because they've got, they've got more of that high gloss kind of spot varnish on these slip cases. And we'll talk about those when we talk about the movies. Um, but really incredible looking stuff. But... Uh, all the nice presentation in the world isn't worth a damn if the movies aren't any good. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about these movies uh, and let's talk about the, the, the future prospects of Cauldron Films and how, how the future is very bright, I think. So the first one I want to talk about is the more recent of these two films. This is Beyond Terror. This is a film from 1980. This is a Spanish horror film. This is directed by a guy named Tomas Aznar. Out of the two of these, it was the one that I thought was kind of going to be uh, the, the most surprising. I was like, I didn't know what to expect. As you can see on the cover, there's bikers. There's what looks like uh, ghosts or what looks like we actually kind of, kind of come to find out uh, are almost uh, blind, dead s zombies. There's just a hell of a lot going on uh, on this cover. And then if you turn around the back, the alternate art adds the, uh, the image from the, the witch who came from the sea. Uh, probably not uh, paid for a proper copyright. But uh, it's just one of those things where it's like, I don't know even what this is going to be. I didn't read. Uh, I didn't read a synopsis. I didn't read anything. I just kind of looked at the couple sample screen grabs uh, that uh, they had put up on the Cauldron website, and then I was I pre-ordered both of these immediately. I was like, yeah, let's. I'm all in for these. Beyond Terror. Very briefly, as enigmatic as the cover is, it's pretty pretty quick, pretty easy to synopsize uh, because it's fairly straightforward. It is the story of a biker gang. They're not really a biker gang. They're just on bikes. They're just using bikes. A gang of like young ruffian lowlifes. The first half of the movie is basically like them on a crime spree. We see them uh, try to rob a restaurant, a bar. It goes very, very poorly. People end up dead, even members of their own uh, group. And we see how kind of terrible these, these people are. They're just real a-holes. Uh, they take hostages at that crime and then they go to try to lie low. And then they're in a, they, they're in this kind of, there's, there's 10 minutes of this movie that's like a home invasion scene. It's very harrowing, very, uh, very sick. Uh, and then they end up uh, out in the countryside, out in this castle, ruins, uh, this kind of uh, haunted place where all their crimes kind of come back to haunt them quite literally, uh, not figuratively, while they're in this castle, while they're holed up in this castle. And that's kind of the back half of the movie. So it's segmented like almost a straight crime movie in the beginning, very like this sadistic young ruffians, kind of like a, a teen panic, uh, teen juvenile delinquent kind of scare movie. And then the back half is this uh, everyone gets their come up and it's kind of almost tales from the quick crypt uh, haunted house story. And the thing that you notice kind of right off the bat it, about this movie is 
A, it's beautiful. It's shot all in location. I love seeing different parts of the world. We'll especially talk about that more uh, when we talk about Crimes of the Black Cat. Uh, the transfer is beautiful. This, this movie looks great uh, for such an unknown movie, for a movie that um, I know one or two of these, one or both of these was like never on disc before. You're blown away by this early 80s vibe of um, kind of coming out of the, the, the 70s and coming out of downbeat nihilistic views of humanity. Just what scumbags all the characters are. Even the two, even the couple that they take hostage, they're awful too. What are the main criticisms we tend to level uh, in, the, in, the, in the modern age, or at least in the, like the kind of American Hollywood way of, of like getting script notes on everything? It's like, there's no likable characters in this. There's no likable protagonist. Or, um, Beyond Terror is a good example of like, no, you don't need, you don't need likable characters. If anything, you could make the characters just so reprehensible uh, and so awful that you're just wondering where the film's allegiances are. Uh, because even once they get in the in the ruins uh, and they're just hanging out, they're just still being just like debauched monsters, uh, which is entertaining, which is great. Uh, the place this film for me does fall down a little bit is how nihilistic and 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 cynical and and awful it seems, uh, and and it feels like it's going to be sleazy and it is sleazy in parts. But then you get to that kind of payoff of supernatural set pieces and people meeting their dooms and we kind of just skip over it every time like a character is like about to get their comeuppance like the you know the people from the people they killed from the robbery are about to kind of get their revenge on them we cut away uh for a, for a lot of the kills and it, it feels kind of almost like truncated it feels like almost like there was meant to be something there um but very 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 enjoyable film very minor uh very minor complaint but it's one of those movies that's like, it's an, as it is, it's a nice little gem of like, wow, I'm, I'm very surprised I haven't heard of this. I'm surprised this movie doesn't have more of an audience. Uh, but now it probably will because Cauldron's putting it out. But it's one of those things where if like, if there was just a, if there were just a little bit more gore, if there were just a little bit crazier things uh, happening towards the end, uh, although there is, the, the ending of the film really does give you what you want. Um, it really does show you uh, the, the, the real supernatural craziness right at the very end. Um, uh, but if it just was a little bit more throughout, it's one of those movies that's like, oh, this is a classic. This is a, a fantastic, everyone should see this film. But as it is, I very highly recommend it. I think it's great. I should mention that with these cool slip cases and stuff like that, these are the limited edition versions of these. And by the time I get this video up, I'm pretty sure they're, they're sold out or they might have some, uh, they might have some available, direct from Cauldron, they might have some available direct from Diabolic DVD, uh, but I will uh, put, I'll put links in the description for those, and if not, there are going to be standard editions. As with the last ones, they release a standard edition that just, it's the same thing, it just doesn't have the slipcase, um, but well worth getting, and then I'd say even more well worth getting, uh, the best film of the, of the two, and probably the best film of the four, probably my favorite movie that uh, Cauldron has released so far, is The Crimes of the Black Cat. Look at that font. It's awesome. Directed by a director called Sergio P Pastore, who worked in all different kinds of genres. This is a, this is a great, great movie. It's this beautiful widescreen movie uh, shot in Copenhagen, which is even, a, it's, it's an Italian film. It's a, it's a giallo, so you're used to seeing Rome. You're used to seeing all those, uh, the kind of uh, standard uh, giallo locales in these movies. Uh, but this one mixes it up. Doesn't really comment on the fact that they're in Copenhagen, uh, but you get a lot of the city. You get a lot of really cool, period flavor. You get a lot of style because it is that early 70s. It feels like really the handover between the, the mod 60s in Europe uh, and like the really blown out uh, excessive 70s. Uh, so the style is really on point. The set dressing is really crazy. The kind of conceits and like what happens in it, uh, it, is, it is definitely not on the tamer end of Giallo. It's a really, really great feel to this movie. The plot, as plot as the plots in Giallo's are want to be, is fairly convoluted, uh, but we open up with a murder that doesn't really appear like a murder. It's like, okay, well, where's the murder weapon? It's almost like a locker room mystery of like, of like, how did this person die? They died of a heart attack. The boyfriend or lover, lover of this of this model who dies first, um, he becomes kind of obsessed with the case and he's, he's trying to investigate it. And his his thing is he is, uh, he is blind and he's a film composer. So we get a little bit of like, the meta-ness of like blowout uh and meeting with uh wait until dark 
because he is trying to figure this out by like by sound and he's he's overhearing conversations and he's 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 adept at like recording so he's trying to record little things to entrap people and figure out what is going on and who's doing these murders um but the 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 title crimes of the black cat is not a uh is not that giallo like case of the scorpion's tail like or bird with the crystal plumage where it's not really about birds and it's not really about scorpions uh they're they're it's slight spoiler to say so, but there really is a real cat that does factor in to these murders in some way. And it's a really, really kind of ingenious, interesting, like, oh, I haven't seen that before, um, murder setup and murder conceit. Uh, but the, 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 the payoff is pretty satisfying. Uh, the cast of characters is very colorful. Uh, the city of Copenhagen itself, I think I've said this before when I talk about these, uh, these European films, uh, especially the period European films, they really do feel like travelogues. Uh, and I love that. Uh, about these films. I love that, especially especially with the year we've had. Not doing a whole lot of traveling, not doing a whole lot of even getting outside of the house. Uh, so nice, nicely photographed, bustling cities. I love I love sitting back and kind of enjoying these movies as a, as a kind of vacation. I felt the same way. This isn't a review of that, but I felt the same way about, um, I've been working my way through the for Forgotten Gialli uh, sets that Vinegar Syndrome's done, and I really felt the same way about Autopsy, uh, which has a, a lot of beautiful exterior shooting, uh, and I've just been I've just been vibing with these uh, and enjoying. But Crimes of the Black Cat, if you're gonna get even one, if you're gonna get one uh, Cauldron Films release, I'd make it this one. Uh, if you were gonna get two, I'd say American Rickshaw, and if you were gonna get a third, I'd definitely go for Beyond Terror. But at that point, you're like you almost have the whole collection, so you might as well. You might as well line up those spines. Uh, this is number four. Uh, you might as well line up those spines and get them all. Uh, but yeah, you really can't go wrong. These 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 sets are incredibly impressive. Uh, each one has a commentary. Actually, I think this one has. This one has two. This one has two uh, commentaries. Um, this one also has holdover featurettes. I guess they maybe they were Italian television or maybe they were other DVD releases of uh, earlier Pastori films. Uh, but it's his. It's mainly his kids talking about his impact, his daughter talking about his impact. Um, but very interesting, a, a director I didn't know a whole lot about, and now I know slightly more about. Uh, but yeah, really, really fun. Great mystery, great, great, uh, great uh, murders, insofar as murders can be great. Uh, very inventive, uh, kind of uh, thrill a minute, never feels boring. Uh, great soundtrack, great visuals. Uh, and Beyond Terror just... If you want something dark, if you want to go, if you want to go for something real nihilistic and real, uh, real like scummy, uh, I would really go for Beyond Terror, and it's got it's got that beautiful uh, Spanish countryside in it too. So, yeah, these are great. Now that I have all four and I have the limited edition version of those slipcovers, it's like my fate sealed. So I'm gonna be I'm all in. I'm gonna be getting these forever. And if I miss out on a release, I'm gonna lose my mind. This week's book recommendation uh, is a book that just came out. I think it just came out last week as as I'm putting this up. Uh, it is called Whisper Down the Lane by Clay McLeod Chapman. If you look at that cover, you see that, 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 that pentagram, you see the creepy kid vibe to it. This is a, uh, a satanic panic uh, horror novel. This is out from Quirk Books. I think you wouldn't be uh, remiss in looking at that cover and thinking, oh, Grady Hendrix. Uh, and Grady Hendrix thing is, 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 um, is mostly... Uh, entirely actually supernatural horror uh with a real like finger on the pulse um vibe to it and and a real uh, heightened emotions but very supernatural um so you you'd look at that cover and same publisher you'd probably think that uh but you should know this is a this is a kind of ripped from the headlines true crime novel that is heavily based in real life is heavily based in uh the satanic panic and the court cases that arose around um, people being accused of ritual abuse at, at schools and uh, elementary schools, and it is a—it's not a light read, but it is a, a, a real page turn, a real lightning fast read, uh, and it's—it's—it's it's, it's a, it's a real wonder of a novel because it's a dual narrative where one half of it is in uh, the 1980s, like hearing how this event that shaped this our narrator's life um like kind of started out and then him dealing with the fallout of it uh in in modern day uh and it's and then like the the two stories link up it's really really great uh it's really scary 
it's got some incredibly disturbing images in it. It's got some incredibly disturbing ideas in it because I think as we saw last week with like Little Lost X and stuff like that, we had like a second mini satanic panic. So it's possible that this stuff could happen again. Very possible. Uh, the like, won't someone think of the children uh, kind of a line of reasoning and line of mania and panic. Um, but it doesn't feel over more. The book doesn't feel over moralizing. The book doesn't feel over heavy. It doesn't feel like it's beating you over the head with it. Um, it's, it's really to walk that line is such a wonder. I was actually asked that the reason I'm, I'm reviewing this so soon after it came out is I was asked to uh, blurb it, which I did uh, enthusiastically. So uh, that's not really, that's not really a disclosure because like if I didn't like the book, I wouldn't have blurbed it. Uh, but just letting you know, I was asked to blurb this book and I, I did so because I was like, yeah, this is great. Um, but wanted to recommend that. I'll put the links down in the description as I put the links for everything. So if you're, if you're looking to buy these movies, I'll put the links. If you're looking to buy this book, I'll put the links. If you're looking to buy my books, I'll put the links. Uh, so make sure you like, subscribe, all that jazz. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, send me your manifestos. Don't. Don't really do that. Uh, I will see you next week.